We have also gone to low pressure systems. And for efficient energy use, going from overhead impacts on center pivots, running the pivot pressures at 80 PSI, to drop LIPA systems, that uh, low energy precision application bubblers off of center pivots that we can run pivot pressures at 20, 25 PSI. We could literally cut the horsepower demand by uh, two thirds to three quarters on those types of systems. And that's just money in the bank to the operator as far as the operating expense and the total horsepower needed in those systems. We've also gone to low, low pressure nozzling on different solid set systems. We've gone to the rotator instead of the impact sprinkler so we can drop the pressures and run those at 20, 25 PSI and still get the range and volume that we wanted. We've gone to low pressure impacts on wheel lines and hand lines where we break the droplet up by making the nozzle a different shape than just a round orifice. We've gone to the square or the teardrop style nozzle which will give us better breakup at low pressure. So instead of having to run a wheel line, for example, at 50 PSI, we can now run it at 35 PSI and still get approximately the same end result just by the way the nozzle is made in the sprinkler, the sprinkler head itself. So a lot of technologies come into play. We have uh, new low pressure turf heads for golf courses. We uh, observed the crown head working out here when we did our can testing. We took a 100 PSI sprinkler and put an interference plate on that so that it interferes with the stream half of the time and we can run that head now at 65%, uh, 65 PSI and get approximately the same distribution pattern we get at 100 PSI with a standard nozzling pattern on that particular head. So there's a lot of innovation that's gone on in the manufacture of sprinklers in the last 10 years that have allowed lower pressures because High pressure costs a lot of money in energy and also in capital expense of bigger pump stations. We also have energy efficient irrigation equipment of other means. And mainly I'm thinking of center pivots when I get to this point. They have totally changed the style of gearbox that's being used on center pivots in the last 10 years. Used to be a worm drive gear where you had one drive coming 90 degrees to the other and it had to had an angle that required a worm drive, a screw type drive on the gear face which is very energy inefficient and the new style is what they call a spur drive where all the gears are in alignment with themselves which goes to very high efficiency. A, a worm drive might be around 30 percent efficient drive and a spur drive can be about 90 to 95 percent efficient. Well right there you have increased your efficiency by three times therefore it takes a third the horsepower to drive it and that's literally what's happened on the motor drives on a lot of these center pivots. There are systems out that are running as low as a quarter horsepower motor per tower to drive a, a, a two-ton tower. A quarter horsepower can drive two tons of, pow of, of tower out there on one of those center pivots. And it used to be we'd go to horse and a half, there's even some that ran two horsepower motors on some of those pivots. So the style of or the innovation within the materials that are used and the techniques that are being used continue to improve the efficiency of the equipment. Another thing